So my experience, and I think this is probably uh, true for many, is um, addressing the topic of discomfort is really uncomfortable. Uh, oftentimes, I think the way we try to deal with discomfort is to not deal with it, right? We just, you know, turn away from it, try to ignore it, try to pretend it isn't there. We basically don't deal with it constructively. I remember the late religious science minister, uh, Reverend David Walker, addressing this idea of some of the non-constructive ways we deal with discomfort. When he asked the question, what would you do if you sat on a tack? Would you complain about the pain, ignore the pain, resent the tack, resent the person who put it there, resent yourself for choosing the seat, expect the tack to move away by itself, or remove the tack. If you chose the last one, you can change your life. God works for you by working through you. So in Science of Mind, you know, what we say is any discomfort we experience arises out of our error belief, our error thinking of being separate from God. When we truly sense our oneness with God, you know, when we really sense that what's most true and most real about us is God's eternal, indestructible, unchangeable, perfect nature, and that that's true, that that nature underlies everything and everyone, then there's really nothing in the world that can bring us down. You know, Reverend David Walker's reference to you can change your life is one of our key science of mind tenets. And implied in that is that you can change your life for the better. We can make changes to experience greater good in our lives by expanding our consciousness to more fully recognize and embrace God's nature as what's most real about us, what's most real about all creation. And that's what all our spiritual practices of meditation, affirmation, study, service, tithing, these all serve the purpose of reorienting our minds toward a greater awareness of God's nature in and around us at all times. As we do that, you know, when we reorient ourselves to feeling that presence of God that's bigger than anything we face in the world, we find the pathway out of discomfort and suffering and into a greater realization of good. Now, here's the point I want to make. While it's true that every moment we have the opportunity to experience God's goodness, because God's nature is always there, while it's true that affirming, you know, reorienting our minds to sense the positive nature of the divine as the greater power, the only real power in the universe, that idea of thinking affirmatively, thinking positively, can get twisted sometimes. You know, so let's face it, none of us seek out you know, being unhappy, physical and emotional discomfort. We want to feel good. That's our God nature. That's the way we're wired. But this idea of change your thinking, change your life, you know, think positively when met by a part of us that doesn't want to deal with discomfort can lead to kind of twisting that idea around to, oh, I'll just say it's all good and I'll pretend I'm not having this experience. I'll just keep saying, no, no, everything's fine. You know, like one of the items in Reverend David Walker's list, just ignore the pain, pretend it's not there. And when that pain doesn't go away, when that underlying discomfort, whatever it's about, doesn't go away, because we're telling ourselves, well, if I just think positively, it'll go away. It can cause us to feel shame, resentment, discouragement, many of those things that Reverend Walker talks about. I think that in a, a subtle way that we don't realize, 
when we follow our knee-jerk reaction, a knee-jerk response to ignore, to suppress, to avoid addressing the discomfort, we're actually giving it power. You know, subliminally, we're saying, I can't deal with this. I don't want to face this. It's too much for me to deal with. And that's completely denying our divine nature that's greater than anything here in the world. We're basically saying, this thing is bigger than God, and so I'm not going to deal with it. The solution of removing the tack, if you happen to sit on it, and don't go, I know you're at home. Don't try this at home, okay? Let me put that little caveat. But the solution, if you sat on the tack, and removing the tack involves first recognizing that the tack is there and that's what's causing the discomfort and then dealing with it. When we're experiencing physical or emotional pain or discomfort, we're receiving a signal from the universe that there's some way that our thinking is out of alignment, there's some way that we're feeling separate from God. And, you know, I'm not saying that we can't avail ourselves of the different tools, both spiritually and worldly, that help to diminish the pain. You know, once we've removed the tack, once we've realized, oh, that's what's going on here, I acknowledge that I'm feeling some pain, I need to do something about it, what needs to happen here, and we take care of it, there might still be some residual pain going on, and I'm all for finding whatever it is that has been created to help us not uh, suffer and not feel that pain. You know, we, we are not a teaching that promotes suffering as anything that's terribly noble. You know, I personally enjoy working out, but I totally understand the concept behind the comedian who said, you know, I'm really not into working out. My philosophy is no pain. No pain. Um, <laughs> you know, we don't have to suffer. But if there's any underlying discomfort going on, we want to remember that that's, something's happening where we're not feeling our connection with God. And we can look at that. We, we don't, by any means, want to wallow in the pain, you know, want to go on complaining about the pain, that's completely unproductive, unproductive, but we also don't want to ignore it. You know, if we suppress or ignore it, I think we have probably had enough experiences that teach us that it is going to rear its ugly head in some other way at some point. And we don't have to let it go that far. So ideally, what I'd like us to consider is that when there's any kind of discomfort, emotional and physical, we want to notice, acknowledge, acknowledge that it's there, inquire, just try to figure out, well, what's this about? And then take constructive action. Stepping back and just saying, what's this about? We already extricate ourselves from the pain by looking at it and then trying to understand what's going on, and then seeing what constructive steps we can take. I really have noticed this around the spiritual tool of meditation. Many people avoid meditation because when they're sitting, sometimes they're not experiencing bliss. And there's this idea that if I sit when in meditation, I'm just always going to feel relaxed and peace is going to wash over me. And often that, that will happen as we allow our minds to get still. But if we've got some things going on emotionally, if we've got insecurities, fears, any feelings of lack and limitation going on, they are likely to come up in meditation. Uncomfortable thoughts and feelings surface. And if you really think that every moment you meditate, you're supposed to feel just divinely in your perfect right place, full of peace and joy, then you might want to avoid that practice if you're not experiencing that. I've noticed that many times when people um, start to feel 
the discomfort in meditation, they look for a way to distract themselves from it. Okay, let me shift my awareness to some peaceful thought or just, you know, keep telling myself peace within peace without. And at a certain point, when we've spent some time just looking to see what's going on and acknowledging, witnessing what's happening, yes, indeed, you know, we don't want to get embroiled in it, so we may want to find a way to soothe the mind to not get entangled in the thoughts of the discomfort. But it's, it's an opportunity for us to learn from the discomfort, to address it, to deal positively with it. And whenever I'm you know, working with this idea of discomfort and meditation, I, I always turn to the teachings of the Buddhist nun Pema Chodron because I think she just has a, such a gentle and compassionate way of helping us move along our spiritual path. And I think you've heard me share before that one of the things I love is that she encourages us to adopt an attitude of fascination while we're meditating. So if some unpleasant thought or feeling comes up, it's a little, wow, huh, there's fear there. There's anger, there's frustration, huh. And then inquire inwardly, what am I believing? What am I believing that's creating this discomfort? There's something I'm thinking or believing that's making me feel this discomfort. And then when we consider that, we can also consider, consider well, what belief do I need to embody, to align with the truth that God in me is greater than anything? Uh, in the world. And when we do that kind of inquiry, things will come up like, okay, I need to embody a greater sense of self-worth. I need to embody a greater sense of God's love in me is bigger than any sense of woundedness. I need to embody a greater sense of compassion, of abundance, of health and wholeness, whatever it is. you know. And then we can address that with our affirmations and all the other spiritual tools, our spiritual mind treatments, you know, to remember that we are worthy, that we are vessels of love, that we are vessels through which God's health and abundance is always being experienced and expressed. But it, it begins with just watching for a moment and not, in a sense, letting those underlying feelings have power over us by us saying, they're too much for me to handle, I'm not gonna notice them. It's like thinking, no way, God in me is bigger than this. Let me look at it, let me see what's going on. And another technique that uh, Pema Chodron offers us is when we notice any kind of discomfort, breathe that feeling, I know this may seem like the opposite of what we should be doing, but breathe that feeling into your heart and acknowledge there are millions of people, millions of beings like myself who may be feeling this right now. Millions upon millions who have felt this throughout time. It's part of the human experience. There's something about drawing that in and then feeling how it's something that can be felt by so many as we move along our spiritual journey, it suddenly opens it up. It doesn't make it about just my pain. It's, it's a discomfort that comes out of all of us not knowing yet the truth of who we are as spiritual beings. And then to set the intention for all of us to find our way out of suffering, for us to Release the false beliefs that are creating it. Doing that simultaneously allows you to acknowledge the suffering, but to also call forth that larger presence of God's compassion that's in us all for ourselves and others that automatically realigns us with our spiritual nature so we can look at the issue from a higher spiritual perspective and then find the way to move forward constructively. 
See, our divine nature allows us to acknowledge the human pain and suffering without getting embroiled in it. As we do, then we create room for that divine nature to reveal the path back to wholeness. So I'm going to, I'm going to invite you to uh, turn your attention within as we work with that a little bit. And so turning inward, allow yourself to notice if there are any uncomfortable, uncomfortable feelings going on inside. Any area where you're feeling any kind of uneasiness, discomfort, pain. And if anything comes up, allow yourself to just relax, to stay present with it, and invoke that attitude of fascination, of curiosity. Huh, there's sadness. There's fear, anger, hurt, whatever. Just notice that. And then ask yourself, what am I believing that's causing this? What fear-based thought do I have that's causing this? And what belief do I need to adopt that will affirm that God's nature in me is my true nature and dispels this belief. And whatever that discomfort, whatever that feeling was or is, call it into your heart and know that this is a feeling that humans have expressed or felt. They've experienced for eons, probably millions right now around the globe are feeling some version of this. And allow yourself to feel compassion for all, including yourself. And set your intention for yourself and all others who feel this, this discomfort to know the truth of God's nature in you, in them, that's greater than any suffering, any pain, any discomfort. And so from this place, please join me in prayer in knowing the truth of that essence of God's nature that fills every part of creation. It is the essence of each and every one of us gathered for the service for every being everywhere. And knowing that God's nature is present in all beings in all situations, let us speak the word, let us know together that for those who are suffering uncomfortable with any form of change, any way things have changed in life. To know the truth that God, that one nature of God that lies in all of us is changeless, birthless, deathless. We remain interconnected with it, in it, throughout all time and space and beyond. We can never be separate from God, never be separate from each other. And so as we know that that divine nature is always there, there's a greater acceptance of any change that happens on this human plane, knowing it just presents an opportunity for God's nature to be experienced in a new way. Let us know the truth that this nature of the divine is perfect, whole, and complete. It is a vibration of health and wholeness. And let us know it is revealing itself right now where there's any experience of dis-ease or discord, that it is absolutely revealing the pathways into healing and wholeness for all beings facing any form of dis-ease. Let us remember that this is a creative energy that is always giving 
and taking in of itself and that each of us feel that impulse of the divine to share of its nature in our own unique ways. And as we open to that vibration, we are absolutely guided to the right places, the right ways to share our talents, our unique gifts, and to be valued and to feel fulfilled. Let us remember that this nature is absolute abundance. God is limitless. It is infinite. There is no lack in God. And so where there is any experience of lack going on, let us remember the truth that we are all connected to that infinite source that provides for us generously, allowing us to enact its nature of generously giving back to life. And let us absolutely remember that the nature of this one is pure love, that that vibration of love is unconditional. And as we open to it, we see a greater capacity to love ourselves, to love all beings everywhere, no matter how they show up, to know the greater truth of that goodness of God that lies in us all, and to hold everyone, including ourselves, in that vibration of love and healing. And knowing that this vibration of love is always for greater good, let us honor its impulse by setting our own intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world that draw our attention. Let us absolutely know that God is at the center of all these situations and therefore good is being revealed for that is God's way. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just overflowing with gratitude that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen.